Are there any stupid ways people try to make money from books? Yeah, I, almost anything people try and do to sell copies of books. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I'm gonna do a book signing. That's stupid, no one's gonna show up. Hey everyone, welcome to Scribe Book School where we teach you everything you need to know in order to write, publish, and market your book. In this video, we're gonna cover 20 ways that you can make money with your book. Most people think that the primary way is through book sales, selling lots of copies, but that's one, and actually, arguably, the worst way. So let's differentiate though real quick. For fiction, selling copies is pretty much the only way. We're not really talking about fiction. Scribe Book School is pretty much all nonfiction, and so we're gonna go over all the ways to use a nonfiction book, especially. Uh, like, so I don't put in the comments about, I was waiting for you to talk about how to make money with fiction books. Like, sell copies, mother all right? That's it. <laughs> the nonfiction, though, that's where the universe of, of revenue opens up. Number one, probably the best way to make money for most professionals from a nonfiction book is consulting services. There is no better advertising, no better brochure, no better proof of work for your consulting or coaching services than a book. It is the way that you show people you know what you're doing, you've done it before, here's what it would be like to work with you, here's what I would teach you, all that stuff. And don't get stuck in the trap of, oh, I can't give my stuff away for free because that's what I sell. That's almost never true. There's a few exceptions where that is true, but in 90 plus percent of the cases, you're way better off just putting all your best stuff in the book because people then come hire you anyway. That's how they know to hire you. And the iconic example I give in the blog post and, and, and we talk about in the video later is Cameron Harold. Like I, when I was looking for a CEO coach, cause I was not a good CEO before I hired a really good CEO, I read every book there was by CEO coaches. Most of them were terrible, right? They were either bad or they didn't put all their stuff in there. I'm like, fuck this person. I'm not like, they're not gonna teach me what they know in the book. I'm not hiring them. Cause why would I hire them? I don't know if they know anything more than this. This might just be sales. And then I read this book called Double Double, which is a terrible title for a book. Cause a double double is a cheeseburger at In-N-Out. But anyway, the book was amazing. The content was incredible. And I was like, this is the guy. I need him to, I need to hire him. And Cameron's fee for consulting is like close to $100,000 for it a is, year. More. Yeah. And that paid off big. Yeah. It was a big deal for him, yeah. for both of us. Number two is paid speaking. How does a book result in paid speaking? There's no better way to get on stage than to have a book. Whoever's booking events or conferences or anything, they want the experts, right? And how do you know someone's an expert? A book. A book is the number one way to prove that you belong on stage. It's not impossible. There are paid speakers, people whose career is speaking, who do it without a book and they're exceedingly rare. Maybe less than 5%. Everyone else who's getting paid to speak is getting paid to speak because one, they're a good speaker, but two, because their book got them on stage. Another thing that authors can do while they're speaking is sell their books in bulk. Yes. They can include it in lieu of a speaking fee or in addition to the speaking fee. A lot of times you can uh, double your speaking fee by adding books. Number three is professional services. This is what Scribe does. We offer professional services. How many clients do you think we have gotten just from that book. I know for a fact, uh, I mean, it's dozens, but I know for a fact that we've had so many clients work with us because they read the book first and were, either they tried it themselves and realized that they don't have the time or expertise so they wanna hire us, or they read the book to know if we were full of shit or not. You don't need us. You can follow the steps in here and you can do it all yourself. Absolutely you can. We wrote this this way. But the reason people hire us is they wanna buy time from us. So like, it takes them way less time or they want our expertise. We're not the only ones who are good. There are other people who are good and they all are that level of expert too. And so we wanted to set the bar of what does high level professional services in self-publishing look like, and we did. Coaching services. Coaching is very similar to consulting. The main difference between coach, coaching and consulting is who's hiring you. Consulting is usually a company hiring you. Coaching is usually a person. The book doesn't change that much. It's just about how you're positioning it and what level of the company you're talking to. But in both cases, you're showing I'm the expert, 
I can help you get what you want. Here's how I'm gonna do it. Number five is clients for your agency. Nick Kuzmich as the example, he's a really good example. Nick has a Facebook ad agency. And so what he does in the book is walk you through exactly how to do it and shows you how complicated it is. You go hire him, exact same thing. Agencies, professional services, consulting, there's a lot of overlap. The reason we separate these out is, one is positioning, because calling yourself an agency versus professional services has some differences, but also because a lot of people don't realize these are all different things, or they could be different things. They'll say, well, I'm an agency, so this other thing doesn't work. No, it works. <laughs> it absolutely works. I think of Ryan Levesque's book. Did you ever read Ask? Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, book. It is a great book, but you go through it and you're like, this process sucks. Like, yeah. I would hate to do this. Yeah. Uh, so you want to hire him. Number six, sell a physical product. This one's kind of surprising. How can you use a book to sell a physical product? You ever heard of supplements, dude? No. <laughs> well, that's why you're so skinny. So actually, yes, this is true. So I, I helped Tim with the four hour body. He wasn't selling the supplements directly. He was effectively sending traffic to those supplement companies and they did exceptionally they well. They did incredibly well. And so you can do whole books around supplements, primal nutrition, precision nutrition. There's entire supplement companies built around books. Not, it doesn't work with every physical product. Like, I don't know how you use a book to sell ketchup. I guess you could have a recipe book actually about ketchup. A recipe and cookbooks, 100% are fantastic. I didn't even, of course, there is a way to do it with ketchup. Um, although ketchup being the primary ingredient in a lot of recipes would be depressing. <laughs> but um, no, if books 20 are 20 ways you can use ketchup, right. here we go. For, for meatloaf. <laughs> There's all kinds of physical products that you can sell with books. Paid community and mastermind groups. I like this one. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic one. So there's all kinds of groups. I'm in a bunch of mastermind groups where basically a book is things we've learned in this mastermind or it's the, the sort of thoughts of the author or the expertise of the author and you read it like, this is amazing. And then you're like, okay, I wanna be in this group. A really good example is the book's not out yet, but a client of ours, Joe Polish, who has a book a group called Genius Network, he's one of the best networkers in the world. We're doing his book now on how to be a, a super connector and a networker. And so when the book comes out, Genius Network's already pretty big. It'll probably be a lot bigger. The other example is Dan Sullivan. Oh, of course. Dan Sullivan has written, God, 30 little booklets. They're not like full-on books. We're actually working on his full-on traditionally published book oh, now. Oh, really? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, Dan's a client. Yeah, he's um, smart. Dan, he's very smart. I'm in, I'm in his group too, uh, Strategic Coach. He uses his books in his group. He doesn't really sell them externally very much, but then like everyone in his group takes them, loves them, they give them out to their friends. So Dan has like 3,500 paying members of Strategic Coach, paying like anywhere from 10 to $100,000 a year. He's, he's doing all right. Number eight, freelance clients. Freelance yes. clients. Yes, all absolutely. Right. If you are a freelancer, and I mean in almost any field, a book is a fantastic way. In fact, a book will usually get you more clients than you can handle. Whether you're a book cover designer or a ghostwriter, information technology, you can freelance programming. There's a million things, right? It's very similar to coaching and consulting. A lot of people who are freelancers don't think of themselves as coaches or consultants, even though they actually are. I can't think of a freelance field where writing a book isn't gonna help you. Even if you're a voiceover person, right? Like, how's a book gonna help me? Great question. Write the book on how to find and hire a voiceover person. And you just send them right to their portfolio. Boom. Number nine, workshops and group teaching. Nice. This is another one Scribe has done. The, another one uh, Scribe has done. Most of the coaches and consultants that we work with, that we do books with, also do workshops. Usually what I'll tell people to do, they come in, we go through their workshop curriculum, and usually that's the book. And they're like, well, I don't understand. If I give away my workshop and I give the whole thing again, it's like, no, 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 trust me. We have our guided author workshop on the internet. You can go, it's on Scribe Book School. Go watch it, right? We still fill that room at $15,000 a seat every month. Why? Because well, there's a ton of services, obviously, to publish a book that we that come with that, and they want our expertise, and they want it. They want our direct help with their stuff. That's really what they're paying for. The information is just not that. It's not a secret anymore, and it's not that hard to get. They're paying for you, and so what the book becomes is a sales document for how how much you can help them. Raise money from investors. This was not one that was all I ever expected until we started getting clients and it works really well, especially in real estate. We've had four, uh, four or five, I think maybe six at this point, 
uh, real estate investors come in and write books about you know why single family homes are the best investment or whatever the, whatever their specialty is and they'll go raise 5, 10, 20 or 30. We had one guy raise over a $50 million real estate fund off of his book. Wow. Number 11, recruit people to work for your company. This is an awesome one. Can you give an example of, of a book that does this exceptionally well? So the Zappos book, Zappos yes. culture book does it really well. Michelle Falcon wrote a book called People First Culture. We actually have a, a culture book coming out at Scribe because we won, we were number one company culture in America last year. There are some ways maybe better, pay a lot, you know, like have amazing benefits, but like so do most companies, right, that are good. What can you do that beyond that? You can write a book about your culture and about what you believe in and, and create, lay out a vision for the future and recruit people into it. It's a great way to do it. Yeah, Mark Organ did this. Yes, Mark Organ did. The messenger is the message. It's the Bible now for his company, basically. Mm -hmm. Number 12, promote done for you services. Again, this is overlappy, but. It, it, it overlaps a lot. This is one of those things though, where again, people need to look at this as a distinct thing. I'll give you a really good example. My wife and I are looking at doing, um, we're building our custom house, right? And so like, Man, I don't know how to do that. I'm not gonna learn this, this is terrible. But what we are doing right now is looking at the books that are how to build a custom house. If you're selling done for you services, the smartest thing you can do is use your book as a training tool for your clients. Teach them what to look for in a company, teach them the questions to ask, teach them how to evaluate people, right? Train them on how to be a client. And if you do it right, it sets you up really well and it hurts your competitors because you know, the thinking is if they're not doing a good job, you're t training your clients the questions to ask, the things to look for, and so they'll see, oh, these people aren't doing a good job. It's one of the reasons we, again, we spent so much time writing a thick 500 plus page book about this, because now when people go to our competitors, they're like, well, hold on, do you do this, do you do this? And most of our competitors don't, they don't know what they're doing, so. Number 13, sell a video course or an information product. Yeah. This is interesting because a lot of people are drawn to Facebook ads, doing webinars and all this stuff. Book isn't usually a recommendation in those funnels, so. Well, it depends. I mean, for Brendan Bouchard it is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the people who are in the information product course business all know and use books, the big ones, all of them, right? They, and books are a huge part of their funnels. Dean Graziosi and all those, and Brendan Bouchard and all those people. Books are like, the Evan Pagan. Books are like one, it's one of the key key zones uh, to fill their funnels. It gives you credibility yeah, in course. a field rife with and it's <laughs> scamminess. scammers and it's easy to give away and, and people understand the value of it and all that sort of stuff. But then there's a whole other field of people who could have courses who don't and don't even think about that as a revenue source. Like most of the coaches and consultants who come in and work for us, they're not from that space and they don't even realize they could be doing that. So a book helps you sell that or a book is the basis for a video information course that you can then use to create another line of revenue for yourself. Do you have examples of people who drove a lot of sales to their video course from the book? We did Dean Graziosi's last book, The Underdog Advantage. He sold, I think, a half million copies of that book. And a lot of paid ads, right? So right. it wasn't just exactly. organic, but he did a lot of organic off of that. And it sold, I mean, it was tens of millions of dollars of masterminds and courses for him off that book. Number 14, sell a software slash SaaS product. Tons of these. It doesn't work for all SaaSes, right? But there are definitely some SaaS products and the iconic example is HubSpot. Like HubSpot's a huge SaaS, one of the, they're a huge public company and they wrote a bunch of books on inbound marketing that's great. Or Drift is another one. They've done a couple books that have worked really, really well for them. If your SaaS is kind of creating a new space or is it requires a lot of uh, customer education, books are one of the best things you can do for it. Russell Brunson. Yeah, Russell Brunson. Great example of this. Well, it's another one for selling courses too. Not just software, but also courses. But primarily SaaS. Software, yeah. Because yeah. he... ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is 97 to $300 per month. And his he just sold tons and tons of books because like you said, it requires a ton of education to learn the benefits of using that SaaS product. But once you're in, you're in. Number 15, change careers. I oh, love yeah. this one. Yeah, oh yeah, no, this it's a great. big one. Especially if you are deep into a career and you're an expert in one, you kind of want to shift fields. It's not easy because you shift fields and a lot of times, you, uh, a lot of people kind of think you go back to the beginning. 
The way you can shift fields and make it a parallel move is write a book about the new field. And especially like carve out a space that no one else has seen, even if it's a small niche. But that plants the flag for you as someone to take seriously in the new field. We've done at least 20 or 30 of these books. There was a woman named Denise Gosnell who came to the Guided Author Workshops. You're friends with her. She wrote a bunch of books on coding within Microsoft. This was years ago. But she got hired by Microsoft because of those books. Number 16, get investing opportunities and be asked to join boards. We've had a couple of people do this. They, they did something big in their field and they weren't super well known for it. So they wrote a book kind of about what they did and not a memoir, it's more, here's how to do what I did. Like Cliff Lerner is a good example. He built one of the first, uh, I think it was like- Dating a, like, apps. Yeah, dating apps on Facebook. And it grew it uh, to like a hundred million dollar company and all this crazy stuff. Hundred million users. Hundred million users, right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is more impressive, yeah, weirdly. Far more. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he, um, he wasn't well known in, in the SaaS space. And so he wrote this book and then it was like, boom. Everyone wanted to work with him. He, came, he joined a bunch of boards. He got all kinds of investing opportunities and he did really, really well off of that. But what the key is, he didn't write the book to brag about himself. He wrote the book to, tell, to teach what he learned and how to do it. And then that's why he was asked to, to do all these things because people are like, oh wow, you can help growth hack my company and all this kind of stuff. He's good, he's a good book. Number 17, promote a facility or conference. Yes, we've done a bunch of books for um, for facilities or conferences. And I know it sounds so- what do, you, what do you mean by facility? Like, like resorts or vacation destinations. Think of it like a brochure, but then no one thinks of it like a brochure, right? No one treats a book like a brochure. For the right facility, the right conference, they're absolutely fantastic. Like Jake Keel's book on Punta Cana. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for Jake's case, Punta Cana has a very small airport that everyone coming through has to go through their bookstore and there's nothing on the place itself. And so he's doing it for that. 18, attract high net worth clients. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. This is one of those things where niche really helps. So the example that I like to use is we had a financial advisor who specialized in high net worth divorced women. So what he did was he did the book on how to manage your wealth as a high net worth woman coming out of a divorce. High net worth means 20 million or more. And so like the audience for this is just not, it's not very big, it's small. He got the book done and like financial advice is the same for everybody. There's 20% that's different for, for high net worth divorced women. So there was real value in there, but the rest was pretty basic. Beautiful book, really well done. He didn't even put it on Amazon. He just got like 10,000 copies, hardcovers printed up, and then went around to every divorce attorney in town who dealt with like, you know, rich people and gave them all like 500 copies. And so what the book was, was a way for them to give something to their client without being obligated, that was legal, without being obligated or to having to take responsibility for it. And so literally they'd say, okay, I don't, you know, I know him, I'm not vouching for the advice in here. Other women have used it and liked it. By law, that's all I can do is, is refer you to other people, right? And dude, his practice is bursting at the seams now. Now this could work for almost any niche, but it works really well for high net worth people because they tend to be readers, they tend to be, in, they invest in information, they invest to save time, they are go looking for other people to solve their problems who are experts. And so if you position yourself towards them as the expert, you're gonna be good to go. Number 19, taxes and write-offs. If you are writing your book for your business, it is by definition a marketing expense, it is a write-off. Whatever we charge at Scribe, you should automatically always get a discount relative to your corporate taxes or your business taxes. Every single time, that's making money. And that's before you start using the book to do any of these things. And number 20, Book sales! This right. is one that you can speak to personally very well. I've sold a lot of books, yes. I told you at the beginning of the video not to focus on book sales, and I'm right, and you shouldn't because it'll cause you to write a bad book. But, cash the checks you get. Like, I mean, you're gonna, if you write a good nonfiction book that is really, you follow all the principles we teach, is, is directed towards a specific audience, solves a problem for them, etc., you're gonna sell copies. And at a minimum, you should look at that as just paying for the cost of your marketing. What marketing pays for the cost of itself within itself? Not many pieces of marketing. I think books might be the only one. I'm not talking about ROI overall. 
I'm talking about the marketing itself you can sell. There are a lot of ways to sell books. Most of them honestly aren't worth the time and effort. Optimize everything, make it easy for people to buy, put it out there. As you use the book to promote yourself, you're gonna promote the book as a secondary function. Cash the checks, man. Hell yeah. Even 100 books a month is gonna bring you, you know, whatever, 500 to 1,000 to $2,000 a month. Passive income, that's 10 grand, 20 grand a year. You're using the book to get attention from your clients so that they know they wanna work with you. And so anything, all of those are just different ways of doing that, to be honest, that's really all it is. All of this boils down to, I am using the book to get in front of my clients and show them that I'm the person that they wanna work with.